1.9% respectively for the quarter. The SGI index spent for the quarter is rupees 1,595 crore, that is US dollars 215 million, an increase of 22% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. The increase was to support sales growth and on account of continued investment in sales and marketing activities for brands in India and emerging markets and behind digital capability building. As a percentage of sales, our SGNA has been at 27.7%, which is lower by 290 basis points over sequential quarters. The R&D spent for the quarter is decreased 446 crore, that is US dollar 60 million, and is at 7.7% of sales. R&D spent increased by 2% year on year and, and declined by 2% quarter on quarter. The R&D spend increase for biosimilars has been offset by a reduction in the proprietary product business. The EBITDA for the quarter is rupees 1,557 crore, that is US dollar 210 million, and the EBITDA margin is 27%. The EBITDA margin for the H1 FY22 is at 24.1%. Consequently, our profit before tax is still at rupees 1,268 crore, that is. US dollars 177, um, 171 million, which is a growth of 47% year on year and 71% quarter on quarter. <laughs> Effective tax rate for the quarter has been at 21.8%. We expect our normal ETR to be in the range of 25 to 30%. Uh, sorry, 25 to 26%. Profit after tax for the quarter is stood at rupees 992 crore, that is US dollar 134 million. Reported EPS for the quarter is rupees 59.65. Operating working capital increased by rupees 950 crores, which is US dollars 128 million, against that on June 30th, 2021. The increase was primarily given by an increase in receivables of rupees 752 crores due to increase in sales and planned discontinuance of the receivable discounting program for the US. Our capital investment during the quarter stood at rupees 358 crores, which is US dollar 48 million. The free cash flow generated during this quarter was a net inflow of rupees 83 crores, which is US dollar 11 million. Consequently, we now have a net debt of rupees 268 crores, that is US dollar 36 million, as on September 30th, 2021. Foreign currency cash flow hedges in the form of derivatives for the US dollar are approximately US dollar 450 million largely has around the range of rupees 75 to rupees 78.4 to the dollar, rupees 6,750 million at the rate of rupees 0 0.9919 to the rupee, Australian dollar 5 million at the rate of rupees 58.40 to Australian dollar, and South African rand 74 million at the rate of rupees 4.97 to South African rand maturing in the next 12 months. With this, I now request Irene to take through the key business highlights. Over to you, Irene. Thank you, Faraz. Good morning and good evening to everyone. I hope you are all safe and healthy. I'm happy to note that we had a solid performance in this quarter on the back of all around performance and contribution from all of our key businesses. This was on the back of consistent baked business delivery, Ramp up in key, in key new products, coupled with contribution from said the COVID portfolio and certain markets, and our licensing transaction announced during the quarter. It is encouraging that we are on track on delivery on our strategy, while also delivering healthy EBITDA and ROC. We feel very optimistic about the future prospects of uh, the overall business, and there are enough levers for us to continue this growth momentum in the coming quarters as well. Today, the US FDA audit of our formulation manufacturing facilities, FTO7 and FTO9, was completed. We have been issued a form, a, a, a form 43 with eight observations. I believe that these observations are addressable and we will do so in the stipulated timeline. Let me take you uh, through the key business highlights for the quarter. The reference to this number and these sections are in respective local currencies. Our North America generic business recorded sales of $255 million for the quarter with a decent year-over-year -year growth of 3% and a sequential quarter growth of 8%. The growth was led by market share improvement in our key-based products and scale-up of the launches from previous quarters. 
The overall normalizations of demand uh, levels also contribute in decent volumes across various categories of products impacted by COVID last year. During this quarter, we launched one product in the United States and three products in Canada. The loss momentum should improve during H2 with the multiple goal dates they line up for NDAs under reviews. Our Euro business recorded sales of 47 million euros with a year-over-year growth of 10% and sequential quarter growth of 5%, driven largely by new product launches. During the quarter, we launched two products uh, each in Germany and Italy, three products in the UK, and one product in Spain. We believe that Europe will continue to be growth driver for us in the next few years with two, a two-fold uh, strategy of portfolio and market expansion. Our emerging market business recorded sales of uh, 1,298 crores rupees with a strong year on year growth of 50% and a sequential quarter growth of 42%, partially supported with sales of COVID drugs. We, uh, within the emerging market, the Russia business grew by 46% on a year over year basis and by 62% on a quarter to quarter basis in constant quality. The growth was primarily led by A, higher volumes due to seasonal demand, be revival in market growth after a negative impact due uh, to COVID in quarter one, and uh, see launch of biosimilar Bevacizumab. Uh, uh, during the quarter, we launched 24 new products across various industries. Our India business reported sales of 1,140 crores rupees, with a strong year over year growth of 25% and sequential growth of 8%. This strong growth was supported by both COVID portfolio as well as sustained performance of the base business. During the quarter, we launched two new products in India. Uh, as per the October report of September 2021, we have grown by 21.2% on a, a MQT basis, much faster than the market growth of 15.4%. Our PCI business recorded sales of 130 million uh, uh, US dollars with a year over year decline of 1%, but a sequential quarter growth of 11%, partially supported by contribution from COVID drugs. While there may be fluctuation in quarter on quarter sales, we believe that there are opportunities to grow this business. During the quarter, we filed 24 uh, drug master files globally, including two filings made in the US. US. We have also filed 24 formulation products across the global market, including two NDAs in the United States. As of September 30th, 2021, we have 93 cumulative filing spending for approval within the US FDA, which include 90 NDAs and 355B2 NDAs. In line with our strategy of commercialization, the proprietary products through our licensing model, we have successfully out licensed two of our products, uh, E7777 and DFN15 during this quarter. We have further strengthened our strategy with the focus of ensuring short-term growth and at the same time build strong foundations for a long-term growth. Our core business in North America, Europe, India, Russia, China, and other emerging markets comprising of uh, the unbreaded and breaded generics and global API business will continue to drive growth. This growth would be led by an expansion of portfolio across markets, improvement in market shares, and driving operational excellence with a focus on productivity. Over the last few quarters, we have built strong pipelines of COVID portfolio drugs. And this can be a meaningful additional growth opportunity for us in the short to medium term. As of now, we have commercialized Sputnik vaccine, Avigan, that is Favipiravir, Remetsivir, and PPG, and currently conducting clinical trials for Molonopiravir and various other drugs. While this portfolio has made decent contribution in the last few quarters, we believe that there are multiple opportunities even for the future. Specific to Sputnik, we are exploring several growth opportunities, which include A, Sputnik Light as a vaccine or as a bo booster dose, Sputnik Light for adolescents, and a C, export opportunities. We are also investing in various innovation business, which will drive growth in the long term. This includes building a global pipeline by similar, 
development of NC for immune oncology, building of PC and nutraceutical portfolio, vaccines, CDMO, and digital healthcare platforms. With the addition of these new spaces, we are significantly increasing the growth opportunity for us. While majority of our growth will be organically driven, we will supplement it with relevant inorganic opportunities. We will continue to draw our profits despite investment in the new businesses. The, the key two enablers which will drive this success will be our people and the digi digitalization initiatives being undertaken by us. As we are committed to our patients to bring uh, in the innovative medicines at affordable cost, we are also committed to our investors uh, to providing healthy and profitable growth on a sustainable basis. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions and answers. Maybe we can start the question and answer, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question team assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Dhamesha from FK Global. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So the first question is, uh, what would be the COVID-related uh, sales in this quarter for us, including the domestic market as well as the exports? So the COVID sales, you know, we have recorded uh, some sales in India and Sputnik, uh, and we have also sold semi travel in a, in a few emerging markets. So overall, the contribution, we have had a good contribution from COVID sales during the quarter. For example, in India, um, the reported growth year on year is 25%, but if we were to exclude Sputnik vaccine sales, uh, the base business would have still grown in mid teens so overall, I would say that it has been a good contribution from COVID portfolio during the quarter. Sure. And the COVID vaccine sales, uh, would you say it has been margin accurate for us? So, so the uh, Sputnik uh, is, it did not contribute uh, to uh, to the COVID, but also did not uh, did not create a loss for us. We are about break even. Between the investment and the uh, between the investment and what we gain uh, during the quarter, we could have sold much more if we had supply. And uh, but we had the special June July uh, a shortage of supply. Uh, we fixed that, and now uh, we are self sufficient out of India uh, uh, for the future on the opportunities that I mentioned, meaning. Uh, Adalic and skids, uh, export, and um, uh, Sputnik like both for vaccine and boosters. So, have we able to crack any contract for the export with the IDIE? We, 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 we do have contracts for export, yes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so can you give some clarity whether or what is the kind of a contribution from the generic rev limit that uh, we have seen from the Canada side this quarter? And what is our uh, kind of uh, preparedness and uh, time? Uh, and also, if you can uh, talk something on the timeline about launching the generic rev limit in the U.S. I'm sorry, I did not get the question from the lower line. Uh, just a second, sir. Uh, so, is it fine, sir? I just wanted yeah. to have a sense uh, what contribution that we would have seen from generic rev limit that we have launched in Canada this quarter. Yeah, so it was a decent launch. 
Canada is naturally not a big market, so the overall contribution is not much, but it was a decent loan for Canada. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you can give some clarity, sir, is there any any clarity now to launch the product, uh, same Revlimid in the US, and what is our uh, preparedness for that? So uh, we got the approval, uh, so we are very happy about it. And with that, it's basically the last uh, obstacles to launch. So we are secured both in terms of regulatory as well as uh, legally. And uh, we will launch it in accordance to our agreement uh, and uh, our settlement agreement. Sure. Just last one question on the gross margin for the generic business. What we have seen that, uh, oh, see, there is a kind of a steady declining trend that we are witnessing for the generic business, uh, global generic gross margins. So it has trended down from 61% to now 57% levels. So is it uh, because of the pricing pressure, what that is in there in the US, or uh, generally it is uh, uh, led by multiple factors, but can be recovered going ahead with the new launches coming up and uh, some sense on that uh, gross margin front, sir. Yeah, so there, there are uh, multiple factors here. But first, I would like to point out two, three drivers, uh, drivers that put downward pressures. So one, as you know, the export incentives that have withdrawn uh, has clearly put a downward pressure on the on the gross margin. Secondly, as you rightly pointed out, there is some pressure that is there because of North American price erosion. However, uh, we have a number of levers to offset that impact. Uh, one is uh, productivity. So as we drive higher sales growth and we spread our assets, uh, we can leverage the, the cost base. Uh, and the second is the product mix. Uh, some of our uh, significant high menu launches are margin electricity. So overall, I don't believe that you know, there is a downward trend in gross margin. Gross margin fluctuates from one quarter to another. And we are fairly confident of the margin profile of the generic business. Sure, sure. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of the Mayan Singh Kiran from HSBC Securities and Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is again on uh, gross margins. So in view of uh, input material uh, cost inflation, how should we look at trends in next few quarters? Yeah, so so uh, indeed, uh, the, there is an impact of the increase in the commodity prices. Uh, and uh, we are offsetting it with productivity activities. Uh, this is one, and second, uh, with the better sourcing. Uh, so, uh, in general, I, I believe that uh, you are going to see similar uh, margins, uh, especially gross margin. As you see, we, we normally trend somewhere between 51 and 56. In the last few years, more between that. 61.5 to 54. This will probably continue to be this way. Uh, I want to, to emphasize, and I normally say it in those meetings, uh, some of it is, of course, product mix. If we will get a uh, greater percentage, uh, a 49% will not necessarily say no. So it's more about the, uh, the uh, actual uh, money than the percentage of it. Uh, while, of course, we are uh, uh, very sensitive to uh, the percentage of the uh, profitability as well. Uh, but let's say likely that it will be the, uh, be the same range uh, also uh, in the future. Uh, sure, thank you for that. And on uh, Russia's business, uh, you explained some region which has led to very strong uh, sales during the quarter. So going ahead, how much of this is sustainable and how should uh, we look at growth uh, patterns in Russia and CIS market in next few years? It is sustainable and, uh, and uh, we also uh, planning on growing in Russia. So it's sustainable uh, with the projection of growth. At the same time, it's not necessarily sustainable on quarter to quarter. As some of the products are seasonal and depends on the cold and flu and stuff like that, especially. 
some of them are seasonal because they are tender products for hospitals, and therefore it uh, depends on the timing of the tender. But on the uh, year-to-year basis, uh, we are planning to go in Russia. Sure, and my last question is on U.S. Uh, pricing scenario. So, uh, what kind of erosion we are facing right now, and uh, when do you expect uh, it to normalize for the base portfolio? So, we do see, uh, like others, a uh, relatively higher level of uh, price erosion, uh, uh, which we were able to offset uh, with both uh, new products as well as productivity measures. Um, I think price erosion will always be there because this is the business model, but it can fluctuate, depends of course on the relevant products uh, to products and uh, how much competition will be there for, for our relevant products. So likely that uh, it will be moderated uh, for us in the next few quarters if I can implement uh, the, the type of products that, uh, that we have in front of us. But it's very much product, it's so all mixed dependent. Uh, I don't see any change in the United States in the policies or any structural change. Okay. Thank you, Rej. Uh, I'll get back in the queue. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Anubhav Agarwal from Credit Trust. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Uh, I have some data questions. Uh, first, in the ROW market, we were doing last year 300 crore kind of funded. Now we're doing 200 crore in quarter one and 500 crore now. Uh, so we incremented a large part of it. So can we assume that 150, 200 crore will be the over sales there? Or can you help over there? What will be the code percentage over there? So I, I don't think I would quote any specific number for competitive reasons. But um, you know this quarter's growth in rest of the world, rest of the market is about 90%. I would say, um, even if you exclude the COVID growth, the growth, uh, base business growth is still very strong uh, in markets like South Africa and Latin America. So I would say there is a good contribution from COVID portfolio, but the base business growth also continues to be very strong. I, I'm afraid I can't give you any specific numbers. Sure, uh, that's helpful. Second question is on the SDNA. So quarterly increase that we've seen, which you talked about, 6% increase quarter quarter. So are these some of the discretionary spends uh, that we're doing now, but may not do later on? Or is this very much uh, a new base for us uh, that we continue to spend on this base? So at the end, of, uh, see, as I, I think I have been saying for a couple of quarters, there are two, three drivers for the SDNA increase uh, that you see compared to same time last year. Uh, one is we have seen normalization of operations, and last year, first couple of quarters, as the end, as the was subdued, uh, and now we have seen normalization. So we are we are seeing good growth in our markets, and therefore we are putting money behind our brand in the branded markets like India and Russia. We are also investing behind digitalization, both front end and back end. Uh, so that's one part of it. So what is normalization? I would say has largely happened. Second is investment that we will continue to do. Uh, the third point I would make is this quarter also has uh, a royalty on semi sales, uh, the COVID portfolio sales, uh, which is the third reason. So broadly, I would say that FDNA uh, has normalized. As a percentage to scale, uh, which is a key measure that we track, uh, we do believe that overall in aggregate for this year, it will be lower than last year. Sure, sure, that's helpful. Just last question on the Duwada plant. Uh, two, two parts of this question. One is how many pending ANDAs are from this plant? Secondly, in terms of rate observation, are more observation on the injectable side or on the oral side of the plant? Can you repeat the second question? Second question uh, is on that uh, out of the eight observations, are more observations on the injectable uh, side of the plant or on the oral side of the plant? Yeah, so the, we have uh, uh, quite a few NDAs. We are not disclosing specific numbers that uh, will come from that, from that side. 
Uh, all the, I, I went and read the observations that will be in the public domain soon. I, we believe that are addressable, and of course we need to address it uh, within the, uh, the relevant time, and we will do so. Uh, these are uh, primarily related to products uh, and not to the, to the site itself. Uh, uh, primarily giving the fact that uh, it was a, a, a PAI type of an audit, which is also uh, a, 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 which is also had the GMP as well. So it's a combination of GMP as well as PAI. So naturally, most of the energy was about uh, in approval for specific products. Thank you, Eric. That's helpful. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question is on Devlamid. Uh, so just wanted to check where we have, uh, you know, uh, 2.5 mg and 20 mg. Uh, do we have exclusivity? And uh, if yes, uh, are we at par with NATCO to launch these two uh, uh, doses? Uh, we believe that we are entitled to exclusivity on those two, two strengths, and we will launch uh, them uh, in accordance to the settlement agreement that we had uh, with the innovators. Uh, with respect to timelines, would you give uh, just broad uh, timelines, if that would be helpful? Uh, we cannot give timelines, sorry for that. It's part of the agreement uh, that we have. Okay, and uh, rough cut, it would be in the range of five to seven uh, hundred million dollars. 500 to 700 million dollars. It will be decent uh, amount of money, we believe. Sorry, sir, I'm not able to hear you. We believe that the number will be decent. We cannot specify or guiding uh, or guiding any number as per our policy. Okay, got it. And my uh, question is on uh, the. You know, the uh, sales that we have done ex COVID. So, India, you called out uh, that your know, India growth is mid teens, uh, ex of Sputnik, uh, which means about 90 to 100 crores. Uh, uh, how would it look uh, if I, uh, you know, include the exports also? Because you have seen a, a very strong growth uh, across your ROW markets and emerging markets. Yes, Sputnik uh, in the in the relevant quarter was was not exported. Uh, we believe that licenses will be generated during this quarter itself. Uh, but in the in the third quarter, we did not export the Sputnik. Sorry, your voice is not clear. Sorry. What I said is, that, do you hear me properly now? Yes, sir. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. So. We did not export during Q2. Uh, export a license will be given by the government uh, only during this quarter, and, uh, and and when we will receive that, we will be able to export uh, Sputnik, not before that. Okay, okay. So okay. the follow-up on ROW, it is, uh, there is a exceptionally high growth, and what I heard last uh, was that the growth momentum is strong, but any particular reason you want to call out? Is it COVID-related products, or uh, is there any one-off to that? Uh, the, 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 there was a great contribution, especially from uh, Avigan, for Fabi Piravir, uh, especially in Asia. This was the part that related to COVID. But uh, as Parak said, even without COVID, uh, there is a very, very uh, robust growth, uh, primarily led by a, a growth in the Russia, in China, in the rest of the emerging markets, in both retail and hospital products. So even without COVID, uh, which contributed in a healthy manner, we, we, we have a healthy growth, and this will continue also in the future. Very helpful. And last one on the PSA, sir. If you could just give some highlight, uh, when do we start seeing growth uh, and, and margin improvement? And on the back that we're already hearing a lot of raw material pressure. So what what exactly we are doing so that our growth comes back? The main growth will come uh, in the next. Uh, uh, so overall, strategically, the main growth will come when the new portfolio of API. 
which will of course support launches in the, by our customers, including uh, our own internal use of the newer API. So if you wish our API business, the biggest product is primarily driven by a group of products that are, uh, let's say, veteran in the generic business, and uh, the new products that will be launched uh, uh, primarily peptides uh, will be, will replace it if you wish Pareto products uh, in the next uh, uh, coming years. Specifically, uh, uh, the API is doing well given the fact that uh, uh, that on one hand you have increased in the in the commodity and you have intensified uh, competi competition of some of these key products. But uh, we are doing well in the penetrating with the newer product, and I believe that uh, uh, within the next uh, few quarters we will see a, 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 a sustainable growth. The fluctuation that we see now probably will continue the next two to three quarters. Okay, very helpful. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nithya Balaji Brahmini from Bangladesh. Hi, uh, thank you. So my first question is on generic Vasipa. Uh, what's the current API situation? Has it eased out? Uh, can you scale up and and take the target market share? So on my course of hand, uh, we uh, believe that we uh, secured the API that we need for uh, the next uh, few quarters and beyond, and we feel very comfortable with our situation right now. Uh, your competitor had commented that this is possibly not a high margin product as, as they would have normally imagined the new launch to be. Uh, would that be the case for DRL as well? Uh, we are not going to discuss the profitability of this product. Uh, I can say that I'm very happy and pleased with the performance of this uh, product. Thank you. Uh, my next question is on if you can give us an update on generic Nuvaring and generic Copaxone, where you are in terms of the revenue cycle to the FDA, and if you are on track for an FY23 launch. Uh, we, uh, on, we are both uh, on the same uh, stage that we discussed last time. Uh, 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 Copaxon, uh, uh, kind of the ball is in our court. We still need to address uh, 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 FDA. I don't remember even how many cycles we have by now, so the recent cycle. Uh, and moving, we, uh, we are uh, waiting for the FDA uh, response. We submitted, uh, I think, back in June. Uh, and uh, this is the status that we have now. Uh, about launch uh, prospect right now, I, I cannot give any finance for the launch. Uh, learning from the past uh, experience, uh, when, when we see it, I believe that uh, we are going to get it. Fair enough, Fair enough. Just on uh, Nuwaring, given that Nuwaring and Copaxone, given that it's gone through multiple cycles of uh, you know queries and then review by the FTA. Uh, are we still, should we still assume once you've submitted it's still a six to eight month review cycle or does it go longer because it's a, it's a multiple cycle now? Uh, with the current, uh, with the current uh, uh, practices, with every, every time that we submit, we are getting a new goal date and that's uh, the practice that uh, probably will continue. I don't think it will be less than that every, for every submission. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Baisiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Uh, Eris, on your Sputnik, uh, you had contracted for 125 million doses, and the expectation was that you would achieve that within, say, 12 months. Uh, given where India is today in vaccination, so do you think uh, uh, this is a realistic target, or do you think uh, the volumes could be a lot lower? Uh, on the on the wave of vaccination that was in India, especially during July and, and August, we, we clearly missed it, uh, primarily because we were lacking of supply on the second dose. Uh, 
And right now, the level of uh, vaccination in India is very healthy. Uh, at the same time, um, we believe that it's still a very viable opportunity, given the fact that uh, Sputnik can be a booster for any vaccine, not just in India, but elsewhere. Uh, the qualification of Sputnik Light as a vaccine and as a booster, and the trials that we are doing for both kids, meaning 2 to 12, and, to, and adolescents uh, uh, 12 to 18, uh, as well as the ability to export. So it's a new, if you wish, a newer opportunity or newer position. In terms of quantity, it's hard to speculate. Potentially, it can be even more than that, but uh, I would not uh, and necessarily speak of the number, it should be still a viable opportunity for us. Uh, but naturally, the, uh, I wish we had more supply during July, we could, we could uh, make this quarter even better. Okay, great. Thanks uh, for this. Uh, for Vasipa, very specifically, Eris, uh, I know you've answered that you have secure supply for the next few quarters. But has your new API supplier uh, approved by FDA, or that filing is still pending? Uh, we we got the approvals of the suppliers that we seek for. Oh, excellent. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and it is, uh, I know you have very limited comments on rev limit 2.5 and 20 milligrams. Uh, and I would not push you too much, but the question here is that for these two strengths, uh, the contract is same as you have for other strength, or uh, is it a different contract uh, with the innovator? The two strengths are included in the settlement agreement we have with the innovator. Sorry, I missed that. The two strengths are included in the settlement agreement we, we, we reached with the innovator. Okay, uh, I'll take this offline. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, and thank you for taking my question. This is the first one on the monopiravir clinical trials that you have been doing in India. What is the update? I thought the end of September is when trials conclude, but I could be wrong. Uh, we, we are expecting the results uh, within the next few weeks, and uh, of course we are expecting the approval of the product uh, by the US FDA. And if both will happen, then it's uh, an interesting opportunity, especially for countries with the uh, lower uh, level of uh, vaccination. Sure, that's, that's helpful. So this could be, uh, and given that Mundupirway seems to be the preferred candidate at this point of time, do you foresee this to be a large, both you have rights in India as well as low and middle income countries, right? Yes, we, we have high expectations, but COVID, like COVID, uh, no one knows what will happen. So we are preparing ourselves for, uh, for uh, a big opportunity, and let's see what will happen, because it's, of course, uh, it depends not just on the approval, but also how the pandemic will uh, will evolve in the next few uh, months and quarters. So sure. I wish uh, I knew, but uh, we yeah, are preparing for the upside. Yeah, yeah no, sure. Uh, it is, does our trial also cover prophylactic use, uh, in which case the use case could be larger, right? Or do we have to do something different for that? No, no, it's a, a prophylactic uh, use. Got it. Okay. Helpful. Second question is on uh, Suboxone film. Um, I know we've been in the market for quite some time, but the brand still seems to be retaining like what about 25% market share. We are at 13%. I'm just quoting IMS data what I can see. Uh, you know, should with the four to five generic, shouldn't generics be higher? Is that, do you think there is further room on Suboxone film? It is, a, it is a, a very much depends on the patterns of the uh, of the uh, of, of the way this product is being prescribed and reimbursed. So uh, the level of penetration of genetics is going to be higher in the future. It's just lower than uh, than the other. Uh, by the way, I do see uh, higher market share than the number you you shared now. Uh, it is close to twenty percent. You think? It's, it's north of 20%. Yeah. Okay, great. That's very helpful. My last question is on 
China. Uh, anything that you can help us update in terms of what, how are we doing, either quarterly or annual run rates, um, what's the product um, portfolio there, how many are we launching, uh, anything in terms of the uh, tender systems, any any update on China, very helpful. Sure. So, uh, first of all, we are on track with China, uh, and uh, also the performance in China is very, very positive on both uh, the partnership that we have there, KRP, as well as uh, the products that are going to what we call the GOP tenders. Uh, the, uh, uh, we are uh, preparing to launch, uh, uh, to, sorry, to submit relatively larger numbers uh, of uh, uh, products for the GOP that potentially can be among the first two files and among the first two markets. Uh, at this stage, more than 15 products uh, uh, for next year. This, this year, it will be probably less than 10 uh, that eventually will be submitted. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and as you know, in the GOP, is normally uh, have a cycle of two to three years, depends on the nature of the products. And uh, we are targeting the approvals in accordance to the timelines of those uh, uh, tenders. Uh, at the same time, our partnership is uh, focusing on on brand generics and OPC, and this is going very, very well, and, and, and continue to grow in double digits. Thanks, Erez. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shrikant Sakolkar from Asian Market Security. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on Revlimited in Canada. So can you please talk about initial trends like price erosion or market share gains? Uh, no, I cannot speak yet uh, on these uh, terms, uh, primarily because uh, uh, post-launch uh, in Canada, there is a process in each one of the provinces and states to, uh, to get approval. So as you know, in Canada, uh, you are getting approval from the Ministry of Health, and then you need to register it in each one of the provinces. So this is the process that we are in. Uh, and uh, so we did launch the product. It's a healthy launch, but we, it did not reach yet its potential. And it will be once it will be approved in all the relevant uh, provinces. We lost this line, so we'll move to the next question. The next question is on the line of Charulata Gaihani from Dalal and Bocha. Please go ahead. Charulata Gaihani, the line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, two, two questions. One uh, in terms of uh, the outlook in terms of biosimilars. Uh, when do you see uh, it contributing meaningfully uh, and uh, I mean by which year and secondly in the, during the quarter there has been some license fee income as well as uh, some uh, as well as uh, uh, sale sale of rights income so adjusted for that, how much would be the normalized EBITDA margin that Dr. Reddy has on? Yes. So, so on the first question, the biosimilars, I believe that uh, in the, the calendar year of 2024, we will start to see more meaningful uh, contributions. Uh, uh, and uh, as we are now reinvesting uh, the sales that we have, in especially in energy markets, by building uh, more capacity and building more R&D, this is our business model, uh, and of course licensing in for uh, uh, the United States. So this is right now the model, and this continues to be the model probably uh, until the calendar 2024 20, uh, or fiscal 2025. Uh, as for the margins, uh, I'm reiterating uh, that the, 25, the famous 25-25 that we are sharing, we are, we are very much in that direction, and, uh, uh, and it is coming faster than uh, we anticipated, uh, let's say, three years ago. So we are very, very close to that. Okay. 
about about your partnership with Freshini and Kabi. What about it? For for Pekfil Grasim. Uh, yes, we are waiting for them to launch and to enjoy their profits. Okay. okay. But uh, they have uh, uh, they have got the approval, right? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, they should get it, but uh, I don't think they will get it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, regarding the EBITDA margin, I I, I said that uh, that uh, we are very close to the twenty five. The gas, as well as the 25 ROC, we are getting closer to that, and, uh, and this is where I would like to see the company in the in the quarters and years to come. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking the question. It is on Sputnik. Uh, you, know, you talked about the potential export opportunity opening up in the second. May I request you to speak on the handset mode, sir? Your audio is not very clear. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, on the Sputnik opportunity, uh, I think if I were to go get it right, you mentioned that the export opportunity for Sputnik should potentially open up in the second half of the year. Uh, now, from a longevity of this opportunity, uh, do you see this essentially being a FY22 opportunity, or do you see it lasting much beyond 22 uh, over the next uh, maybe more than a year or two years, uh, as you see it? It depends on uh, what kind of booster policy uh, countries will adopt. Uh, so at this stage, and uh, as we all know, COVID is evolving uh, faster than uh, we can uh, plan. Uh, this, uh, this stage on the export is either uh, uh, countries with lower level of vaccination, and uh, in the medium term, it's primarily about the booster. And, uh, but it, of course, depends on the booster protocol that each one of the countries will adopt, especially the countries uh, uh, in the emerging markets. Uh, so here it gets to be seen, but this is the opportunity. Okay, thanks. And secondly, on our R&D, uh, now that we've significantly, uh, you know, uh, produced our, uh, our specialty work, where are we spending currently our R&D dollars on? Which areas are the focus areas for us going forward? We are spending on uh, uh, on our uh, generic uh, portfolio for the for the spaces uh, in each one of the market, meaning the United States, China, Europe, emerging markets. We are trying to. Uh, globalize uh, the products, so we, we are developing products uh, for more than one market, and if possible, to all of the relevant markets, uh, which was part of the productivity products. Uh, but this is in line of our core business. In addition to that, we are spending money on uh, biosimilars, uh, and recently also on uh, COVID products as well as vaccines. Specifically for India, we, we do have uh, in Russia, a certain clinica on some differentiated uh, product, clinically differentiated products, uh, that uh, the money is also going there. Uh, uh, and uh, last but not least, we are developing uh, APIs uh, as well as intermediates uh, as, as part uh, of that. So there is a small group uh, uh, under a branch of Dr. Ellis called Origin Discovery that is developing products for immune oncology with the business model in which we are uh, taking some of the assets and licensing out uh, in early stage, and this is what is financing the products that we want one day to come to the marketplace. Uh, and this is part of what I uh, discussed before of Horizon 2, uh, the current business model of a generic brand and generic and API will continue to be our main uh, business for the time being. At the same time, we are building uh, new businesses that will serve us in the next coming years. Uh, part of it is coming by our investment, and part of it is coming by self-financing of that specific group. So we want to 
create the growth of our core business as well as building the new uh, franchises uh, and maintain the 25-25. This is the challenge that we took upon ourselves, and so far we are uh, in that direction. Thank you. If we can squeeze in on last one. You talked about uh, inorganic growth. Uh, so what are the areas uh, that typically are uh, top priority for us from an uh, from from, uh, inorganic opportunity perspective? So these are primarily a, a complementary a products or assets that can help us grow in the in the in the in our spaces, uh, like we did with the acquisitions of the products of Walkart at the time. Uh, so we are uh, uh, all the time evaluating primarily product assets, uh, but in each one of our spaces. Uh, uh, India, uh, Russia, United States, Europe, uh, we are evaluating deals and, uh, and uh, as well as emerging markets, uh, which, which will be complementary in nature. And we are trying to leverage, of course, our uh, relatively comfortable uh, financial situation that we have now. Thank you and best wishes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Ganesha from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the uh, follow-up. Uh, again, coming back to the Sputnik export uh, opportunity. So from the uh, economics, uh, does uh, export change anything? I mean, uh, in terms of the whatever profit margin that we get uh, for India versus the export, uh, is it different or would it be same? The prices uh, outside of India uh, currently are higher than India. Sure, and in terms of the, uh, the quantities, uh, it still remains the same, right? 125 million people, so roughly 250 million doses. This, this is the, co the, the current contract that we have with RDF is still uh, the same. Uh, we are now trying just different outlets. Uh, it was meant primarily for India. And uh, this did not materialize the way uh, it was designed originally. Now we are trying to find opportunities uh, in the other uh, places that we, we have discussed. So we have a contract in place right now for export or not? We do have contracts for export in terms of uh, uh, places agreed that we can export the products. Yes. Sure. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sami Bajiwala from Open Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the follow on. Um, uh, are there any updated thoughts on outpatient uh, health tech platform that you talked about? Um, how is it progressing? Now, what are the key milestones that you're looking, uh, looking out for? Yes, we launched it in uh, July. Uh, it is uh, uh, going very nicely. Uh, and uh, we are uh, now at the stage of uh, upgrading it to uh, five more cities in India, uh, as well as upgrading the digital uh, platforms that are supporting it. Uh, the, the recruitment of the physicians is going well. And uh, it's a very, very interesting, disruptive uh, idea. Uh, hopefully, it will... Uh, continue to be in that way, but let's say the the launch is encouraging. Okay, and is it only towards the doctor consulting or is it also towards uh, e-pharmacy and diagnostics? Um, are you also expanding on that? It's end-to-end -end solution, including uh, all of the above. Okay, great. And one more. Um, as far as biosimilars for regulated market is concerned, can you confirm how many do you have in phase three clinical? I thought there was one rituxan. Um, and over the next 12 to 24 months, uh, how many more can enter into clinical trials, please? Phase three, we have one, which is rituximab. Uh, in the next uh, a period of time that we discuss, we will have four more. Four more, excellent, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Agarwal for closing comments. 
thank you all for joining us today for the earning call uh, in case of any further queries uh, please reach out to the investor relations team thank you thank you on behalf of dr radhi laboratories limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines